so I'm going to read from uh, Nagamati Library a little bit here this morning. Gospel of Thomas. And since I can't read through this lens, I'm just going to place this out here. It says right here, it looks like in the... Well, it doesn't matter. It's in the Gospel of Thomas. Look it up. Chapter... 24 and a half 24 it says the father reveals his bosom now his bosom is the Holy Spirit he reveals what is hidden of him what is hidden of him is his son so that through the mercies of the father the aeons may know him and cease from laboring in search of the father resting there in him knowing that this is the rest. Having filled the deficiency, he abolished the form. The form of it is the world that in which he served. For the place where there is envy and strife is deficient, but the place where there is unity is perfect. Since the deficiency came into being, the Father was not known. Therefore, when the Father is known, from that moment on, the deficiency will no longer exist. And in the case of the ignorance of a person, when he comes to have knowledge, his ignorance vanishes of itself as the darkness vanishes when light appears. So also the deficiency vanishes in the perfection so from that moment on, the form is not apparent, but it will vanish in the fusion of unity for their works, it says. It says that right there, boys and girls. Um, works. And it's say for their faith, their belief, their thoughts. They had once a long time ago. James the Just to whom the leadership of the ministry of the apostles was left by the Son of Man talked about works and I want y'all to know that it was with Kepha that's Peter by the way Peter to whom the kingdom of heaven the keys to the kingdom of of heaven were given because Peter not Saul Paul the Herodian the rich Roman practice in the rhetorical arts of word nonsense no it wasn't Saul Spaul it was keep a Peter was the rock of the church and that's why it was to him whom the keys to the kingdom of heaven were given. And if you want to know what the apostle, apostle being defined as one who walked with Messiah from the beginning to the end of his ministry. One of the twelve, Peter. If you want to know what Peter had to say, well, his personal scribe who wrote down everything that he said write that down send a letter to so-and-so record that follow me around and if something happens today write that down Clement Clement wrote down everything that Peter had to say about what Jesus taught him and the other disciples apostles well same thing in this case they were first disciples and then apostles and then after that, the disciples, the apostles had disciples. So, um, my whole point here is Paul did not walk with Jesus throughout his ministry. And there ain't 13 apostles. There's 12 pillars upon which there are 12 thrones, upon which there are 12 apostles, upon which none of them Paul sits. Just get that in your mind for one minute, okay? Please. I mean, the man confesses on himself to be a liar right off the bat, right from the beginning, there in the middle of Acts, 
he gives, well, all throughout Acts, in fact, three separate personal testimonies regarding his epiphany, his hallucination, whatever it was that he had with Hasatan, this vision on the road to Damascus, if, in, if one even occurred at all, this precursor to Constantine's nonsense of a vision of Yeshua, to which there was never any fruit produced. If you think Paul is the fruit, you're mistaken because Paul taught us that redemption was free. Just believe. Just believe and confess it and freedom. God bless America. Just wait until you get beam me up Scotty uh, um, raptured on up into heaven because as the servant you're mightier even than you should and you should not have to suffer or have any discomfort or not have wealth heaven forbid because the Ebionites Ebionite means poor it means don't have any money and blessed are those who are poor without any money because what Jesus said. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading. This is still funny. Let me scan the page here for you. I should do that. I might stop the video for a minute. This is rather important and beautiful, actually. Isn't it? For now their works lie scattered. In time, unity will perfect the spaces. It is within unity that each one will attain himself. Within knowledge, he will purify himself from multiplicity unto unity, consuming matter within himself like fire, and darkness by light, death by life. It's trying to say there that when Yahushua, when Yahuwah wakes you up from your slumber so that you quit believing the nonsense that you're told by the world, that it takes a minute for all the spaces to get filled in. And in the midst of that, when you lose your foundation and discover that you've made an idol out of the pulp wood product, the KJV, above God and that you now worship your KJV you will fight and kill a man if necessary to defend it even um, when you come into knowledge that there is a great big gigantic gap between Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 2 you should understand that's a hint that there's missing information here and it might be necessary for you to look in a book other than just one you might have to search out your found your, your salvation your foundation you might have to look for it and strive for it and contend for it and heaven forbid when you find it, you're going to run into a problem just like I did in Bible Fellowship on Saturday when I shared the truth. And they ran me out of there. I was excused from fellowship because I wasn't willing to worship the 13th Apostle Paul. Instead, I was suggesting maybe we could take a moment to look at what the apostles had to say. I mean, as I understand it, they had to say that Yeshua came to abolish sacrifices and that he never ate flesh because he said that if you touch a dead thing, you're unclean. And so, you know, don't do that. And also, 
the life is in the blood and I made that animal and I breathed life into that animal and his blood is alive and you aren't to take it upon yourself if you do some stupid thing and sin to think that it's going to please me to go murder one of my creatures and shed its blood as though that's going to atone for your sin? Are you kidding me? You just increased it. The lying pen of the scribes, if they were permitted in before Jesus came the first time, what makes us feel that we're so privileged and beautiful and deserving that it couldn't happen to us possibly? They couldn't sneak anything into the KJB, even though it tells you all over the place to watch out for Wilson sheep clothing and beware of crooked people and crooked nonsense doctrine and learn ye to be good money changers. That means to know the good from the bad scripture, to be able to discern the difference in truth you don't think it's even possible that man could physically corrupt words on paper I'm here to tell you that they can and they have and they did and they'll do it again I'm just saying anyway I'm going to continue on reading what Clement said that the one who holds the keys to the kingdom of heaven who is the rock of the church anointed apostle by Messiah Peter said he said that if indeed these things have happened to each of us then we must see to it above all that the house will be holy and silent for the unity. It is, as in the case of some people who moved out of dwellings, having jars that in spots were not good, they would break them, and the master of the house would not suffer loss. Rather, he is glad because in place of the bad jars, there are full ones which are made perfect for such is the judgment which has come from above it is past judgment on everyone it is a drawn sword with two edges cutting on either side when the word appeared the one that is within the heart of those who uttered it is not a sound alone but it became a body a great disturbance took place among the jars because some had been empties emptied others filled that is some had been supplied and others poured out some had been purified still others broken up all the spaces are shaken and disturbed because they had no order or stability error was upset not knowing what to do it was grieved in mourning afflicted itself because it knew nothing when knowledge drew near it this is the downfall of error and all the enamorations Air is empty, having nothing inside. Truth appeared, all its enamorations knew it. They greeted the Father in truth with the perfect power that joins them with the Father. For as for everyone who loves the truth, because the truth is the mouth of the Father, his tongue is the Holy Spirit, he who is joined to the truth is joined to the Father's mouth by his tongue whenever he is to receive the Holy Spirit, since this is the manifestation of the Father and his revelations to the aeons. He manifested what was hidden of him. He explained it. For who contains if not the Father alone? All the spaces are his enamorations. They have known that they came forth from him like children who are from a grown man 
they knew that they had not yet received from nor yet received a name each one of which the father begat then when they received from his knowledge through truly though truly within him they do not know him but the father is perfect knowing every space within him if he wishes he manifests whomever he wishes by giving him form and giving him a name and he gives a name to him and brings it about that those who come into existence before they come into existence are ignorant of him who fashioned them I do not say then that they are nothing at all who have not yet come into existence but they are in him who will wish that they come into existence when he wishes like the time that is to come before all things appear he knows what he will produce but the fruit which is not yet manifest does not know anything nor does it do anything thus also every space which is itself in the father is from the one who exists who established it from what does not exist for he who has no root has no fruit either but though he thinks to himself I have come into being yet he will perish by himself for this reason he who does not exist at all will never come into existence what then did he wish him to think of himself this I have come into being like the shadows and phantoms of the night when the light shine on the terror which that person had experienced he knows that it is nothing so take your vision and shove it Saul you know nothing you've not even come into existence this man is a fraud and a phony and a fake and a belligerent to Yahushua when you wake up and understand these things and clean yourself out of the unclean spirits that are inside of you because of all the flesh that you consume and fast for a minute and then immerse yourself in water and cleanse yourself of that sin then God is going to bless you tremendously, Yahuwah. An instant double blessing is going to come to your life. One, the tapeworms and the freaking parasites and the vril and the demons and the worms inside of you that you get from eating all that disgusting meat that you were never intended to consume. As they go away, you begin to get control of your mind again because they control your mind for you. You are their host. You're hosting demons. This is how come when Clement first came to Jerusalem from Rome after he met Bartholomew, when he first met Peter, you know, Peter said, hey, it's nice to meet you, so-and-so. But he wouldn't let him eat with them for a few days. He said, you need to go cleanse yourself and fast for a couple days. And then afterwards, go out there to the waters like living waters like what we see here like I, I'm going to do soon here in a minute maybe even today and immerse yourself and cleanse yourself there's a little part, part of me that believes that Yahuwah in a manner that we don't understand does exist in water in that Water has emotions that can be reproduced and calculated scientifically. You can bless a glass of water 
and then put it under a microscope, freeze it and put it under a microscope and find beautiful crystals. Or you can curse and shame a glass of water and then put it under a microscope after you freeze it and find disturbing looking crystals. Well, they're not, I mean, it's just blobs. And so there's a consciousness even in the water. Our bodies are made of over 70% water. The air that we breathe, it contains a percentage of water called humidity. And then underneath this there and around us is water and it's called seas. And above us is water. It's what scriptures in the history of the world and uh, society, civilization over uh, man's written history knows. Just like it says in Genesis, that the waters were separated from the waters by the firmament and then the land came up and then people stood on the land. That's why the sky is blue. Stars are not suns. They're not terrestrial. They're not bodies. They're luminaries. They're lights. The Bible says they're angels. But what they're not is bodies. Maybe if you take off the rubber soles of your feet and put your feet on the dirt and ground yourself for a minute and let all the electronic interference release out of your body into the ground, that might help you just for a moment. Right, right this minute, that one thing can make you feel better. I guess that's enough for now. I hope this blesses you in some way, and I'll be back to talk more later. Thanks, y'all. Say bye-bye, Bellas.